Germany is on the brink of modifying its constitution to allow all 19 secret services to hack anyone at any time, for any reason, secretly. We are witnessing in every Western country a rapid transformation of what were formerly free countries into police states. Governments violate their constitutions, issue edicts in place of legislation, treat citizens arbitrarily, and pursue agendas on the basis of justifications that are contrary to the facts. The digital revolution has given governments powers far beyond those of Big Brother in George Orwell's dystopian novel, 1984. I can remember when the year 1984 seemed to be the far distant future, and I can remember the free country in which I was born and grew up. That country is no more. The youth of today have never experienced a free country and do not know what has been lost. Indeed, they are absorbed in the digital revolution that they think is freedom. The war on terror launched by 9-11s and the war on CV-19 launched in order to learn techniques of mass population control have together terminated free societies. Today privacy is a non-existent right, as are free speech, free inquiry, open public debate, and the right to operate a business. In place of debate, people who disagree with official explanations, enforced by the prostitutes and social media are cancelled. Your every email, phone call, purchase, and web search is captured and used to build a profile of you for marketing purposes and for future arrest should you prove troublesome for the regime. Whistleblowers are prosecuted despite legislation defending them from prosecution. Thought control and behavior control are imposed by firing people and destroying their careers for using unapproved words and taking unapproved positions. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The collapse of liberty has been rapid in the 21st century. But it has been creeping upon us for some time. Few Americans alive today remember, when a wife could not testify against her husband, or a husband against his wife. Such testimony was considered a violation of marriage that had formed one out of two. It was self-incrimination, which is prohibited by the US Constitution in those days when the Constitution was respected and had authority. Few who are alive remember that the marriage contract was in part a sexual contract and there was no such thing as wife rape. There was no such thing as child protective services with the power to intervene in the family, seize children from parents, and have parents prosecuted on charges of child neglect or abuse, whether real or fabricated. You could yell at and spank your child without being arrested. You didn't live in fear that bruises from sports activity or falling off a bike would be noticed by a school teacher, doctor, or neighbor and result in an intrusion into the family by child protective services, determined to prosecute parents in order to justify the budget. Kids of my generation were free to be wherever they chose to be, without adult supervision on weekends, holidays from school, and summers, as long as they were home by dinner time. Our bikes made us mobile, and we could be anywhere in range of a bike and a pair of legs, and our parents weren't arrested for child neglect. It was mass third world immigration, integration of formerly stable homogeneous neighborhoods, and the rise of the pedophile sex trade that made children no longer safe. Multicultural society failed to protect children and began persecuting parents instead. A person could start a car without, if it had a manual transmission, having to push the clutch pedal to the floor. A person could drive away without having to put on a seatbelt or endure endless beeping. Soon, if not already, you must be strapped in or the car will not move. The range of free judgment has been greatly narrowed. Even the appliances we use bully us. I could go on at great length, but it is too depressing. When the New York Times and CNN recently referred to the stage town hall spectacles of Biden and Trump as dueling events, they inadvertently revealed the truth that US presidential elections are America's favorite movie and that the corporate media is in the entertainment business. While it is ludicrous to imagine these tottering actors crossing swords and tights, their skirmishes in suits and ties are good for a few laughs if you have the stomach to watch them. Only people who still believe in professional wrestling would think these clowns don't work for the same bosses, the umbrella people, aka the power elites, the national security state, etc., who own the country and choose their stooges to represent their interests in the White House. I much prefer Mel Brooks, a genuinely funny guy. 
the columnist, Russell Baker, once said, The purpose of such political entertainment is to provide a manageably small cast for a national sitcom or soap opera or docudrama, making it easy for media people to persuade themselves they are covering the news while mostly just entertaining us. As for debates and town hall farces in television primetime, the witty baker said that the charm of television entertainment is its ability to bridge the chasm between dinner and bedtime without mental distraction. Now let's proceed to the dark side, where the sardonic screams of laughter dissolve into tears. For such entertainment serves a devious distracting purpose. To conceal the nature of social evil and the driving forces behind American politics today. It is not particularly complicated unless the syllogism, all cats die, Socrates is dead, therefore Socrates is a cat, rings true. Then it's an impossible conundrum. We are not cats or Socrates, as far as I know. But like them, we will also die. Everyone knows this, but the thought of death is not particularly have a nice dash, so people deny it as much as possible in a host of ways. Most people prefer life over death, and when death does approach and can no longer be denied, most hope for immortality in some way, shape, or form. Yes, there are those who assert this isn't true for them, and there is no reason to doubt their sincerity. There are philosophical arguments to support their position, such as that of the Roman poet, Lucretius, in his famous poem, De Rerum Natura, or On the Nature of Things. But I would maintain with the great psychoanalyst, Rollo May, that all such naturalistic efforts, including Lucretius's, to explain the way human anxiety rooted in death, founder on the human emotions of pity, grief, love, and loneliness. Rational explanations take us only so far. In their efforts to deny the human condition and dismiss the spiritual dimension, the irrational, and the demonic, they open the door to madness, as is happening today with the push by the world's economic elite to convince people that they are machines and that their machine dreams will conquer death. For those who love life, it seems axiomatic to me that some form of perpetuation and redemption of an individual's life in the face and fear of death is widely desired. This can take many forms. A literal afterlife, fame, heirs, monuments, money, children, etc. History is quite clear that people have always sought some way of transcending their physical fates. But for the elites, there will be no death. For having realized that their stolen wealth and power can only take them so far, and they too will become food for worms, they have commandeered science and medicine to undertake their immortality projects. If medicine fails to find for them the secret of immortality, then computer science and artificial intelligence will, and they will be uploaded into computers and live forever in their beloved cyberspace. Digital immortality is not a joke for these people, see Kurt Swiles, the director of engineering at Google, the singularity etc., for they are actually insane, but hold key positions throughout the computer and biotechnology industries. Check where the super-rich invest their money to confirm this. None of it is secret. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.